kind of want to show people like, Hey, this, this is possible, uh, you know, going from having PTSD, dealing with the military, you know, having trouble like transitioning into the civilian life, losing everything, tw- you know, lost everything twice. You just want to show people like, Hey, this is, this is possible. You are not alone. There are people out there that are struggling with the same things that you are. And, uh, that's why I do like a lot of my motivational posts in the morning, you know, it's just showing people, Hey, you can do this too. Hello friends. Welcome back to another episode of the carrot cast podcast. I'm your host, Brady Winder. This is the podcast where we help agents and investors like yourself build businesses of freedom and impact. Speaking of impact, November is impact month here at carrot. So go to carrot.com slash impact, check out all the awesome content we're putting out to help you make a bigger impact. And that brings me to my guest today, Mr. George Anderson, who we met at a carrot event just about a month or two ago. And George is doing some awesome things to make an impact in his community. And he's someone with a, a really big heart, really big mindset, big vision, and uh, an incredible story. So I can't wait to share his story with you guys and introduce him to you. Um, and we're going to get into how you can get into real estate if you don't have a lot of money and some creative ideas is how you can build a, a real estate business and get out there, start flipping, start developing um, when you don't have a bunch of money uh, through creative skills and through relationships relationship building skills. So we're going to talk about that and uh, it's going to be a fun conversation. I hope you guys enjoy it. So George, welcome to the Carrot Cast, man. How are you doing? I'm fantastic. Thank you for having me. Absolutely, man. Uh, how much coffee have you had today? A lot. <laughs> I have to drink a lot. We're friends on Facebook now. And every time I, every time I pull up my Facebook, the first thing I see is it just makes my day. It's a, we we're talking about this before the, before the podcast. It's a nice little treat is a, a picture of George every day with his coffee cup. You can see the steam coming out and it's a nice little motivational quote from George. And that's just kind of made my day. So thank you for those. Oh, wow. Well, I'm just trying to help people out and just having fun with it. Absolutely, man. Tell us a little bit about your backstory and how you got into real estate. What's your journey been like? I grew up, uh, my dad was a plumber um, and he always, whenever I would be off of work or out of school, he would tell me to get in the truck and be like, get in the truck, boy, let's go. We're going to go to work. <laughs> so I uh, <laughs> I grew up in the construction field and um, and he sooner or later, when I, when I joined the military, he started his own construction business. And uh, when I was in the Navy, he, uh, he told me, hey, when you get out, come work with me and we'll, uh, we'll start, you know, doing this together. And, uh, when I got out, it was around, uh, around 2008 and we all know who that, how that happened. Mm. <laughs> uh, things started slowing down, but, uh, he, he worked for, um, the city basically, uh, at that point, uh, refurbishing houses. So the city would do grants for houses in the area and, and get them, uh, you know, eco-friendly and whatnot. So, we would do roofs, like new windows and, and stuff like that for the, and painting the ex- exterior of the houses so that it made the area look a little bit better. So, mm. uh, yeah. Nice, nice. And so this was, so 2008, uh, you you joined the Navy. So Navy was this 04 to 08? Uh, it was, 2000, frame was that? 2000 to 2004. And then um, I went to college for uh, media arts and animation. Uh, from 2004 hmm. to 2008, and right when I got out, that's when I started working for my dad full time again. Okay, yeah, Inter- that's an interesting deviation. I was expecting media arts and animation. Yeah. Okay. And so, uh, what happens after working for your dad? You guys are are flipping houses, remodeling houses. Mm-hmm. Um, I decided to kind of like go off into the world on my own and move to Washington from California. Um, and I started working for a large property management company in, uh, in Seattle, uh, invitation Mm. homes. I don't know if you ever heard of them. Mm -mm. And, uh, so we just, I went around doing maintenance for them for about, uh, four years actually. And, uh, you know, just fixing toilets and, and like fixing doorknobs, maybe some staircase rails, like do a little patching or something like that on the walls and. So learn that side of the rental uh, side of things. I didn't know I was actually in the real estate world at that time, to tell you the truth. Yeah. Um, and uh, got got a little bit bored over there and um, went to Japan for another year. Uh, and during that time, uh, was really, really tough for me. Uh, got divorced from my ex-wife and uh, she kind of like set me back into Seattle so I was like, hmm. 
uh, homeless at the point with, you know, just a dog and a backpack. And uh, my friend from Seattle or from Spokane drove over there and picked me up and brought me to Spokane. And so I was just like sleeping on his, uh, on his basement floor for a couple of weeks there. Um, hmm. so that was fun. Yeah. That's brutal. And so this is, uh, so this is from Seattle to Japan to Spokane and this is after the property management phase, right? Yeah. And I got back into another, uh, I started working for another property management company that only did apartment, uh, complexes at that time. And, uh, he put me into a supervisor position, uh, at a 600 unit apartment complex. And, mm. uh, so I just managed or helped them manage that, uh, for a while and, uh, watched, you know, watched how he was running the, the apartment buildings. And he was always coming in with these nice cars and nice vehicles and stuff like that. So I asked him, how did, what, how did you get there? You know? Yeah. Um, and he like, I want a Lambo. Where's my, <laughs> right. <laughs> so, uh, he, he was like, well, if you got a couple, he's like, well, you're working right now. So just come with me and we'll go have a beer. And, uh, he told me how he started off 35 years ago as a, um, as a principal in, um, one mobile home. And now he's running a multi million dollar business. Did he just lay it out all on the table for you and say like, Hey, if you want to get in, here's, here's what you need to do. Like, how did that, how did you go from, okay, I'm working on properties. I'm not property manager, supervisor. Where was the, the leap in there to start doing your own projects? Uh, he gave me a book of how to, how to invest in real estate. And, uh, I forgot the, I forgot exactly what book it was. I'll have to try to get that to you later, but it was about in part apartment investing and stuff like that. And it just, mm. it, it clicked for me, like right off the bat, like, Oh, this makes total sense. Mm. Um, what's going on. I started going to real estate meetings at that point. I started listening to bigger pockets. You know, I, I was like, well, they need to find, I need to find a meetup. So I went, I went and started doing the meetups after work. And, um, one of the guys there said I could start my own handyman business that I would do a lot better for myself if I did that. So I just started, you know, charging 35 bucks an hour to go to people's houses and work on them after, after work. And, uh, I started getting so busy. Um, he's like, well, you need to up your prices. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. Yeah. I started doing that and I was even more busy at that point. Um, so I had to quit my full-time job to start doing the, the, the handyman stuff and all while going to these real estate meetings, uh, a lot of guys were like, why don't you just get the, why don't you do just full blown construction? Uh, come partner with me, yeah. you know, kind of deal. Was leaving your full-time job to go into your handyman business? Was that like a big moment for you? Was that like, Oh sweet. I get to leave. Or was it more like, I'm still working a ton. I'm still, this is crazy. Um, it was, it was a really crazy leap. One of my buddies had to talk me into it. It took me a, uh, it took a year for him to talk me into it, um, mm. to take that leap. But I was working from yeah. sun up till midnight, basically every single day. Oof. Yeah. Holy cow. Um, I mean, if you want something bad enough, you'll go, you'll go after it. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Holy cow. And so you made that leap of faith. So you're now you're in business for yourself. And so it's like, okay, well, why not? Why not the next level buddies are trying to talk you into being a GC, is that what's happening? Yeah. So like right when we quit or right when I quit my job, um, my buddy started, uh, his wife, um, him and him decided to go buy 12 acres. So they were fixing her house up. So he's like, well, come and work with me for, you know, and fix this house up, uh, with me. So I was like, okay, great. Like I'm quitting my full-time job and I'm getting a paycheck over here and I'm going over to this place and I'm working with you and I'm not going to get paid for how long? Like six, <laughs> six months. <laughs> like, yeah. like, how's that going to work out? And, uh, yeah, yeah, that was, that was pretty interesting time. Interesting. What did, what did that turn out like that, that 12 acre deal? Uh, he's got a beautiful spot, uh, right next to a, a nice stream. He's got a cabin right next to a stream and I like to go up there and uh, stay in one of his uh, pop-up tents every trailers every once in a while. So that's pretty fun. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Okay. And so what's your, what's your business model look like today? So you went to handyman, sort of doing some more construction. Um, tell me about, we were talking before the podcast, you're, you consider yourself a syndicator. Um, what are your deals looking like right now? 
Um, so, uh, when my buddy started, uh, when we started working on my buddy's place, um, I had this like brilliant idea of just having all these like private investors start walking through his house. So I just started calling up everybody. Hey, come down and check out what we're doing with this house. Um, see what we're doing. See if you like it. You know, if you like it, you could come invest with us. And, uh, we had about five or six people walk through and, and three of them said, yeah, well, whatever you need, we got it. Uh, hmm. you know, so I had a hard money, uh, lender come through and he was just wowed by what we were doing. And, uh, the private money investors came through and were just like, okay, we, we got you no matter what. So, uh, basically what I did is I started using the private money to, uh, leverage for the hard money. And, uh, okay. we started, we started buying houses, uh, to start flipping on our own. Oh, okay. Nice. Yeah. Where. Where were you finding, uh, you, uh, you didn't have these connections at some point. Where'd you find those first investors? Honestly, it's all by word of mouth. So like I tell everybody what I'm doing. Uh, my wife says it all the time. I'm, I talk about work way too much. Um, <laughs> but, uh, if you like what you do, it's not an issue. No, it's if you hate what you do. Yeah. <laughs> so like, I just tell everybody what I'm doing. Hey, here's my, here's what I'm like doing right now. Uh, my vision is this, I I'm really big on vision boards. Um, there was a Steve Harvey, uh, uh, video that I watched and he talked about Habakkuk two and two, write your vision on tablets. So who he reads it will run to it. And even though it may tarry, mm -hmm. it will not tarry. And that, Terry means take a long time. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, what I do is I just tell people my vision and where I'm heading and they just want to jump on board and, and, and come along for, with the ride with me basically. So this is like, while you're flipping homes, while, you know, even at your full-time job, while you're a supervisor, you're just saying, Hey, this is my, this is my end game. This is what I see myself doing someday. And, and you're just sharing your story with people along the way. Yeah. Yeah. And growing that word of mouth. Yeah. Are you in a Are you in a small town or bigger community? We're in Spokane, uh, so it's a oh yeah, that's right. Pretty decent yeah. size, uh, pretty decent size area now. Sorry, I can't believe I forgot that. I actually have roots. I met I met my wife in Spokane, so I feel dumb for asking that. But yeah, Spokane's got a special place in my heart. And so you started getting some uh, private money lenders, some hard money lenders, and then what What came after that? Uh, we bought one house. Um, my buddy Keith Sant, uh, love that guy. You, you know Keith Sant. Um, sent me. He he sends me leads, um, and I go out and I talk to the owners. Well, he sent me a lead down in Clarkston, which is about two hours south of us, and uh, we bought that house for pretty cheap. And uh, my buddy and I just started sleeping in our trucks down there. We we actually pulled it all the way down to studs. And we would hmm. sleep down there four nights a week, um, you know, and uh, we would just work on that. And then during that time, um, our, you know, we had another real estate agent send me another property that was up here. Um, and my private money was just like, yeah, buy that one too. And I was like, well, <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, we only have two guys right now working. It's just me and my business yeah. partner. How are we supposed to get two properties done at the same time? So what we would do is we would sleep four nights a week down there. And then we would come back up here uh, to Spokane and we would work three days and three nights on the weekends on this property up here. Um, and we finally started finding uh, extra people to help us along the way. It, it just it, mm. it didn't work out as in the best possible scenario. But I mean, sooner or later, people start to join your ranks as you move further, you know, mm. along the the line. Yeah, that's a that's a gutsy jump to be in the middle of a flip and say, okay, yeah, we can take on this other one right now. When it's just the two of you guys. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, man. <laughs> are you guys, so those flips are wrapped up, right? Yep. Those, both those flips are wrapped up. We sold those last year. Um, and we found a couple other wholesales and along the way. Um, okay. that was nice. interesting. <laughs> you mentioned, you mentioned you're not, you're not a typical wholesaler or so, but you are doing wholesale deals. Is that right? Yeah. Or I'll do a, there? I'll do a wholesale here and there. Like, 
Um, I like to buy the things for my, I like to buy the houses for myself. Um, you know, yeah. uh, I'm, I guess you could say I'm a little greedy like that, but, um, yeah. <laughs> but all, all of my deals usually come from one source, which is SEO from, um, from our buddy Keith. Um, that's awesome. Yeah. If, for anyone listening to this, if you, if you haven't listened to the podcast before, if you're not familiar with Keith, we've got a few episodes with Keith and, uh, um, in the podcast, but you can also go to on Facebook, SEO meets real estate investing or SEO meets real estate investors. There's a Facebook group where Keith and uh, Andy are sharing a lot of their SEO knowledge and wisdom. And so go check that out. Um, that's what, uh, that's who George is talking about, where he's getting these, these super high quality SEO care leads from. Um, before, before we started the podcast, George, you were telling me about, um, you just landed your first development development this is huge tell me about this like this is massive so i've been i've been going to the real estate meetings for a long time uh that's almost going on three and a half years now um and the lady that runs the the real estate meetings is a real estate uh agent and investor herself she brought me a uh 2.67 acres on a with a farmhouse with a lot of land in the back and it's kind of like a u-shaped property that goes around another property and uh she was like hey you know you said that you want to do like development in your and you know that's where you see yourself later on down the road uh this might be the development situation that you're looking for Mm -hmm. and um i had a couple buddies come by and look at it with me and you said we we all agreed we could put 13 houses on the back of this one house and uh so basically what I did was I went around to about a hundred individuals and I said, Hey, this is what I got on the, on my books right now. This is what I'm looking at. Um, so a hundred people told me no, or, uh, 90 people told me no, uh, 10 mm-hmm. people told me maybe seven people said they opted out at the very end. Three people said, yes. Two people said, I'm going to do this with you no matter what. Let's, let's do this. Um, my private, mm-hmm. so I, I actually partnered up with a guy, um, that has the money. And then uh, we use his money to get the hard money for it. And he, since he's a, a bigger investor, he can uh, absorb some of the of the cost right now. Um, so that's that's kind of how my playbook was going on with this one. I was like, okay, how can I make this happen and not hurt anybody else financially? You know, I don't want to do that. I don't want to put somebody in a in a bad situation. So yeah, yeah. Two yeses, two good solid yeses to uh, out of a hundred. That's a uh, that's a lot of drive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had a lot oh, of people man. tell me no, and and to me, no means next opportunity. Well, I commend you for doing that. I uh, yeah, to me, no means no, and I'm 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 wouldn't drive as hard as you, but that's awesome. Um, so how are you? How are you structuring that deal? Uh, with him, it's 50, 50. So uh, basically what's going on with that is, uh, I do all of the, there's a house on it. I'm going to do all the rehab myself with my guys. And, uh, and then I'm dealing with the city and stuff like that. He is the money back, uh, backed guy. He also like helps me like, you know, kind of visualize where, you know, what the house is going to look like, but I make sure that everything gets done. You know, the, the rehab gets done, the city gets taken care of. I call all the contractors that, you know, we need to punch in the sewer line, the water line, uh, bring in the electric and stuff like that. So I'm, I'm dealing mm-hmm. with all that. It's, it's a lot of work at the beginning, but once you get into the, you know, into the groove of things, it, it just becomes second nature. Okay. I got to call this guy today. I got to go talk to this engineer, uh, type deal. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. Are are you having any issues um, with contractors right now, like finding quality contractors and managing them? Because I know there's the shortage and everybody's spendy right now. <laughs> um, I'm not really having problems with the spending, the spendy type thing. Um, there's a lot of guys that will come and work with me, uh, but they'll take off like a couple of weeks later, like, oh, I can't do this work. It's too hard. But, uh, you know, I had a couple of guys quit on me the last couple of weeks and, uh, you know, due to personal personal issues and I'll, mm-hmm. I'll let that, you know, I'll leave that to them, but you know, I'm not going to talk, I'm not going to talk negative about anybody. That's not, that's not who I am. Um, yeah. I just, I, I hope they find their, their path on the, on the way. I was going to say, it seems like you're not having too hard of a time keeping, you know, uh, finding the contractors that you need. Yeah. Word of mouth right now. I really should go on like a bigger, uh, like 
uh, website, maybe like Indeed or something like that and start looking around. But, you know, if you go to Home Depot bright and early in the morning, uh, you'll find the contractors that you need. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's actually a good tip. I mean, so most people would overcomplicate it and start with the Craigslist ad or start with Indeed. Mm-hmm. Home Depot would be a lot faster. Oh <laughs> well, yeah. Just go to the pro desk <laughs> and be there. like, yeah, go to the pro desk and be like, who's here yeah. at five thirty in the morning? Because those are the guys that mm-hmm. you want to talk to. They're the ones that are out doing, you know, moving and shaking. That's the golden tip. <laughs> Tell me about some of the other uh, partnerships you've made along the way and how you came into those. You've got, you know, your syndicators. So you've you've got private investors that you're working with. You've got your contractors. What other partnerships have been valuable to you? Uh, currently, um, I'm working on raising uh, uh, fundraising uh, 1.5 million. Hmm. Uh, for some reason that number just popped in my head. And, uh, so I was at one of the real estate meetings and I was talking to these new, this new couple that just came in and, uh, unfortunately her dad just passed away and left her uh, a commercial property and stuff like that. And, um, I was, we were talking some more and I was like, well, you know, uh, you don't have to tell me, you don't have to tell me this is personal stuff, but what exactly are you working with financially? And she's like, well, you know, my dad just left me the the, the property and we have equity in that. And she goes, that's about 700. And he left us cash about 800. And I was just like, Oh, <laughs> there it is right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, I mean, if I'm a big vision board person, so I put things on my vision board, like, you know, you speak it into existence kind of that way. Um, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Nice. I like that. Um, so tell me about, um, you know, we talked about the deals that you're doing right now. I think that's amazing. You've gone from essentially went from, you know, being homeless temporarily to getting in this with some construction flipping experience, but really haven't like GC'd any projects before and, you know, made your way up to supervisor, you're doing flips, working with investors, which, you know, takes a lot of guts to go out there and start those relationships. And, you know, when you don't have like all of this massive experience behind you and you, you're not sitting on money. Um, it's really cool how to see how you're just making things happen like this. Um, tell me about, I want to hear what drives you and like what sort of impact are you hoping to make in the community? Uh, my daughter is my why. Um, she lives in Japan with her mom. So mm. like, I just wanted to show her that I'm not just a deadbeat dad you know, Mm. um, I haven't been able to be in her life very long, unfortunately, because she lives in Japan and she only speaks Japanese. She doesn't speak English. So, Mm. uh, she's the reason why I push like so, so far, you know, and obviously my, my family now I've, I've, you know, I got married last year, uh, to my wife and, uh, she's a big mm. reason why I do what I do now too, because I don't want her thinking I'm a deadbeat husband. <laughs> yeah. Um, congratulations by the way. Uh, That's amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I just want to make the world a better place. Like leave it a little bit better than what I found it. Right. It's a little crazy right now. It's always been crazy, but, um, if I can, you know, leave a little bit of a piece of me behind, like a little placard with my name on it saying, Hey, George was here. He did this. And you can throw it in the middle of the river for all I care. Just as long as there's a placard somewhere with my name on it, I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> well, it sounds like, it sounds like that energy, that motivation, you know, showing up for your daughter and showing up for your, your family now is, is a good, healthy energy, you know, um, I like to think of in terms of like healthy fuel and bad fuel, like the bad fuel can, um, can definitely fuel you and fill you for short bits. And it can be really powerful. Like, um, if you've got a chip on your shoulder, you're trying to prove somebody wrong. Um, but it sounds like this is that good, healthy energy where you, you want your family to see that you are, you are showing up, you know, there's, yeah, it sounds like a good, healthy energy and it's evident by your, your journey so far. Well, when you've been down and out too, um, and you lost everything, uh, you, you don't want to go back to that and you want to prove like, I mean, you kind of want to show people like, Hey, this, this is possible, uh, you know, going from, um, you know, having PTSD, dealing with the military, you know, having trouble like transitioning into the civilian life, um, losing everything, tw- you know, lost everything twice. Uh, hmm. and you know, you, you don't, you just want to show people like, Hey, this is, this is possible. Uh, you are not alone. Uh, 
uh, there are people out there struggling with the same things that you are. Um, mm. and, uh, that's why I do like a lot of my motivational posts in the morning. You know, it's, it's just showing people, Hey, you can do this too. Yeah. Uh, I'm not, I'm not, yeah. I'm not special. <laughs> I love that. I, I appreciate your transparency, man. You know, on on this podcast, we we go through a lot of people's stories that go through a, a large amount of success in a relatively small frame of time. And so I think it's it's healthy for people to understand that is the minority. You know, we focus on the success stories. And so it's important to realize that some of these stories are built over long periods of time and in different ways, you know we have a lot of wholesalers on this podcast, but not everybody in real estate is going in. Hey, they did 10, 12 wholesale deals their first year and now they're just killing it. Um, there's a lot of people that give up and go another route. And there's a lot of people that do something different, like what you're doing. And it sounds like you found, uh, you know, you've been consistent about a few things. You've been consistent about showing up. You've been consistent about word of mouth and you've been focused. You had that vision board and you saw yourself, Correct me if I'm wrong. It sounds like you you knew what you wanted within real estate specifically as far as a business model. Like you knew you wanted to uh, flip and develop, right? Yeah. You you weren't distracted by like, oh, I could do this and this and this. It's like, no, you you read the book. You saw what made sense. Go ahead. Uh, shiny object sy sy uh, syndrome is definitely a curse of mine too. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm, not, you know, I, I do yeah. I get sidetracked quite a bit actually. Um, but yeah. if you have that vision, you know what true north is. You, you kind of come back to it really quickly. Well, you, you, myself, and everybody else in the every other entrepreneur. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Um, another part of telling people what what I was doing though is I was posting. Uh, daily updates of my flips. Like, hey, this is what it looks like mm -hmm. right now. This is what we're doing now. Um, this is how it's going to look later on. Uh, so I would do like live videos, uh, you know, evergreen marketing, just like Trevor says, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, I do have a, uh, a YouTube page, but it's, it's, it's only got like 30 videos on it, if that. But it does show mm -hmm. the progress of the flips. And so these live videos, were you doing that for, for your sake, for accountability, or are you doing this like for the, you're doing this for the community to see this is what I'm doing and just to stay top of mind for people? Right. It, it was actually both, um, the, mm. the stay in front of people and for myself, because like, I do want accountability because a lot of people that are watching me, they're like, oh, this is what he's, he said, he's doing this. He's, he's doing, he's actually doing it. I love that, man. So, um, I got a, I got a couple more questions before we wrap it up here. Um, I appreciate you sharing your story, man. It's really cool hearing, you know, what you've done so far. Um, tell me a little bit more about what your your vision looks like for Spokane. So like five years from now, George Ander Anderson has made an impact on Spokane. What does that look like? Before the podcast, you were talking to me about your military experience being a veteran and some of that passion you have for helping other Navy vets. What's that look like in Spokane? Well, I want to work on uh, building apartment complexes, 100 units plus. That's that's where I'm going. Mm -hmm. That's where I'm heading. Um, but my real true uh, vision is, um, and it just came to me one day when I was, you know, I used to go to counseling for uh, for PTSD with the mil with the military, uh, the VA mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And uh, we were sitting there talking about impact on veterans and how we can help more and. Um, he told me that, you know, once a veteran gets on the streets, it's very, very hard to get them off. Uh, so mm. you have to get them right when they get out of the military. So you have to get the transition, uh, from, from the military to civilian life. Um, and he was talking about like, you know, com camaraderie and, uh, you know, bringing people together. And I, it popped in my head, 300 acres in Montana, uh, a veterans, uh, outreach, uh, program that helps veterans transition from mil or military to uh, civilian. Uh, it gives them counseling, job training, how to talk to civilians, because let's just get it, let, let's get it out there right now. Uh, we do not, we're not very friendly when we get out of the military. Uh, we're, we're pretty <laughs> rough and, and rigid and, um, yeah. you know, so, you know, giving them that, that little, like, here's, here's where you can go. Um, you know, it's going to help them and benefit them a lot more. So, uh, you know, 
dealing, like actually training them how to talk to other people. Cause you can't just go around screaming at people like, why aren't you doing this? You know, you should be doing, uh, I can't believe you. Um, just being a little bit more patient. Um, especially with mm. civilians because civilians, we act a little bit, you know, they're a little bit different than, <laughs> than the, yeah, than, yeah. yeah. And, uh, you know, just, just bringing people together onto this, on, onto this, uh, 300 acres. Like I, I envision, uh, if you're looking from the, from the sky down, a big, a big giant town hall, that's a circle basically with all of these bungalows coming off like rays of sun. Yeah. And, uh, mm. and it's basically like an extended taps program for veterans. Um, yeah. you know, you only, you only do two weeks of taps, uh, and then they kind of send you off and you're on, you're on your own, but it, this gives a six month to a year program to, to get them on the level and like here, like, this is how you find a rental house. This is how you set up all your, you know, your electricity, your water, and your sewer and all that stuff. This is how you can use all the programs for the military that they, that they've given you. You, you have like the VA loan, you could use it for this, you know, and, uh, you can use your, your, uh, your money for college and stuff like, like this. Um, you don't necessarily have to hmm. use it for, uh, you know, going to a business school. You can, you could use it for trade schools. So yeah. Yeah. Just giving them mm. kind of like a roadmap. Yeah, absolutely. I, you know, what I love about hearing that is how clear it is. Like you can visualize the structure, like it's in Montana, you know, the layout of the houses, you know, the specific, sounds like you've had like specific conversations with people, you know, like future talking to yourself. Um, I love how clear that is. Um, you know, we, we've got a couple podcasts on like how to craft your vision story that Trevor has done over the years. We'll, we'll try to link those up in the show notes, but for anyone listening to this, that is struggling with, you know, how to come up with your why or you're really struggling with like, what am I, what am I even doing this for? Whether you're brand new or you're doing it a few years and you're just caught up in the grind. I've, I've run into a lot of investors who are like, what am I, you know, I've lost my why, what am I doing? I think what I'm taking away from George's story is that, you know, when that light bulb went off, it was outside yourself and you saw an opportunity to help people, um, with your unique experience. You and I were talking about this before the podcast is like, everybody's been through some, some hell, you know, everybody has their own dark story that, you know, they probably don't want to share. And for you, that's how you've chosen to help people. Like that's, that's part of what's driving you. So everybody has that. And I would just encourage anyone to listen to this, to struggle with their why, to dig into that and say, okay, what have I been through that's unique to me? Um, how do I wish someone would have helped me or how did somebody help me? And how, how can I share that with other people? Because that, that motivation, like that drive is going to be way healthier, way more sustainable than any sort of uh, monetary goal or any sort of goal for your business. You can have both and you do have both because you you need those monetary goals in order to make the impact. But I just love how that is sustaining you and, you know, causing you to show up daily for the people around you. So thanks for sharing that, man. Oh, of course. Yeah. No, it's, 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 it's bigger than us. It's not just about us, right? It's, it's, it, we live in this world with everybody else and uh, a lot of people are struggling right now. So like we got to help as many people as possible. Uh, that's, that's why I'm doing what I'm doing. Yeah. Yeah, it ev it, evol it evolves over time, and like I said, when you write your vision down, you got to be as detailed as possible. Like, if you want a brand new car, I mean, what kind of car? What color? You know, uh, what kind of interior do you want for that? It's got to be detailed. And if you mm -hmm. write that down and you read it every single day, it, it will happen. I promise you. Like, uh, I mean, uh, my vision board when when um when I started writing it down. Uh, I wrote that I wanted to have a better relationship with my daughter. And literally one mm. month later, my daughter got her brand new phone and started calling me. Mm. So that's awesome. Yeah. So you got to speak it into existence that way. Yeah, absolutely. I love that, man. Um, well, one last question for you. One thing I want to touch on before we wrap it up is, you know, you had, you had talked about uh, that season where you had, you had just left Japan, you were going through, you know, what sounded like a nasty divorce and, uh, temporary homeless sleeping in your buddy's basement, 
you mentioned before the podcast some sort something about a spider bite, you know, going to the <laughs> hospital <laughs> in that season. Yeah. That's, Anyways, that's not. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, that wasn't the the final question. <laughs> um, but I wanted to ask you, like, that would just uh, that would wreck a lot of people. I wanted to know, like, what got you through that season? Like, what were your thoughts, and what were you, like, what were you doing to to get you through those times? Well, I, I was homeless, like, kind of uh, when I was younger. Uh, after I got out of the military. And, um, I was having some trouble with my dad at that point. And I, I just never wanted to go back to that again. Like I didn't, I never wanted to go back to having a bad time with my father. I didn't want to have, you know, go back to, uh, just like feeling sorry for myself, um, self-pity. And I just, I wanted to, I just, I don't know. I just wanted to make a, like an impact in the world. Like, okay, there's a reason why I'm here on this planet. Uh, if I'm sitting here and with self pity and, and feeling bad for myself, uh, that's not doing me any good. And it's definitely not doing anybody else any good. In fact, anybody around me, mm. it's going to just drag them into the depths of hell with me. And, uh, you know, I don't want to be in the belly of the beast, like, like Geppetto basically, you know, at the bottom of the yeah. sea. And, uh, so I just, I found my way out and I, you know, like, like I said, you just got to find your why. And, uh, and, and really go after and, and just really go after it and, and really, really, really detail where you're going, because if you don't mm-hmm. have that roadmap and you don't, if you don't know where true North is, you're going to get so lost. Uh, you know, your, your vision board is your, is your GPS and, uh, that, that will get you to wherever you need to go. And a lot of people don't understand that true North, uh, you know, on the journey, they, they forget that there's valleys, rivers, and, you know, <laughs> brambles and stuff like that. You're going to get stickers, you're going to get cut, you know, you got predators out there and yeah, that journey is that it's a long journey. But if you, if you set yourself to it, you, you'll be fine. You really were, you yeah. will be, especially if you start out and you make your life a little bit better. I mean, make your bed every single day. That's one thing that you can do that'll make your life better every single day. Make your bed and make one room better in your house every single day. Hmm. I mean, I like that. At least it's a checklist, right? You know, wake up, I'm drinking yeah. water. Okay, check. Uh, wrote in my journal, check. I made my bed, check. You know, and, and once you start seeing the things that you're checking off, you're like, wow, I'm not. I'm not a waste of space after all. I'm actually going out there and, and doing something to make my life just a tad bit better little by little. And I mean, if you're consistent, you know, it's like the compound effect, you know, a, a, a tiny domino can knock over a domino. That's a, a domino. That's a what one and a half times its size. And by the time it's like the 17th or the 20th, it could reach the moon at that point. Hmm. That's wild. That's wild, man. Hmm. I appreciate you sharing that, especially little tips about making your bed. I, I love the tip. I don't love making my bed, but I might have to try that. I might add that to my little checklist. Well, there's an admiral that was talking about it. He said, make your bed every single day, because if you have a crappy day, at least you come home to a nice made bed. <laughs> I like that. I like that, man. Well, thank you for sharing. You know, the the part I relate to about your story is like, you know what I love about rock bottom is that <clears throat> once you've hit it, you you know, it's so motivating to never go back, you know, you know, I love rock bottom because that means that there's only one place to go from there, you know, exactly. Uh, It's going up. Yep. I love that. So thank you for sharing your story. I appreciate your transparency, man. Um, I'm very excited to, you know, have you back on the podcast in a few years from now when some of these things are happening, because everything you've written on your vision board is it seems like so far has come to fruition in timing. And so I'd love to have you back on one day and, and check in and see where we're at with some of the stuff. It'd be an honor. Yeah, absolutely, man. Well, anybody listen to this, um, if you got value out of this, um, share with a friend, share it up. I know some people could use this encouragement and to hear just a real vulnerable on a story like this. Um, if you have thoughts, feedback, want to start a cup of conversation, hit me up Brady at care.com. I'd love to talk. And um, yeah, thank you everybody for listening. Thank you so much, George, for hopping on the podcast, man. Well, thank you. All right, we'll see you guys later.